um, introduce you to our awesome worship team. So Paul Hart is our worship minister, our leader, and he and his team are going to come up and um, do a few songs for us. Good evening, everybody. We're going to go ahead and sing a few songs here.
all you faithful. Little one, you 
Now remember, ladies, if you need anything, you yell, Dusty! That is thanks to the wonderful Miss Carrie Ostegard. She makes the dinner. And I truly believe when we get to heaven, those cupcakes will be in heaven because Carrie makes the best cupcakes. <laughs> so I'm going to do another door pr um, raffle drawing. You can't hear me, really? That's a first. Oh, I said to thank Carrie for the dinner and for her awesome cupcakes that are going to be waiting for us in heaven. So, our next door prize, this must be the kid night because it's Danica Bertram. All right, so now we, um, I'd like to introduce Tamara. She is going to come up and do our message for the night. Thank you, Kathy. So, yes, I am doing our message for this evening, and I'll try to make it not too long. Those of you that are used to me know that's going to be an issue. So good thing you're fed, huh? <laughs> so as you came in, you should have all gotten a little Christmas ornament. Um, if you didn't, please do let us know. There are some extras. And this is our theme for this evening. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. Psalm 119, verse 105. That obviously inspired all of our centerpieces and whatnot. And to be honest, this is a scripture that's one of those I think that we hear a lot and it sounds nice, and we think, oh, what a pretty turn of phrase, because the Bible really is good sometimes about just making some beautiful turns of phrase. But when you think about it, what does that mean? Your word is a lamp unto my feet. What it means is that we live in a world that's full of darkness. Amen? Amen. I didn't think it would be a surprise to anyone if I mentioned that we live in a world that is fallen and full of darkness. There's pain that we didn't even ask for. There's injustice that hasn't yet been addressed. There are all kinds of things. And sometimes we begin to wonder, how is, how is God a good God when we look around and we see darkness everywhere? I don't think I'm the only one that's ever wondered about that. Well, his word says, your word is a lamp unto my feet. He's acknowledging you're in darkness. But I don't expect you to be able to know how to navigate that on your own. He knows us. He knows each one of us individually more than we know ourselves. That amazes me. That just when I have this amazing breakthrough with God, he's like, I'm so glad you're there, but wait until you see what else there is. 
It's exciting. I mean, it really is awesome. In the midst of all of this darkness, there's light. He says, the word of God is a lamp unto our feet. Because when we live in a world that is full of darkness, man, it's really hard to see which way to go. It's hard to see what's down that road. And also, you can't see all the time what else is in the darkness with you. But again, he didn't expect us to navigate this world without direction. And when he says that his word is a lamp unto our feet, what he means by that is that it's our guide. That in this darkness, there is light that will show us the safe place to walk. And when he says your word is a lamp unto my feet, when, he, when the psalmist says this, what he means is that when I don't know what else to do, when my emotions are so overwhelming or circumstances are so overwhelming, I don't know what to do. I don't know which way to go. I don't know which way to turn. But when my emotions can't be really counted on because they're going crazy and telling me all kinds of stuff that I know has gotten me in trouble before because I listened to them, I can look at his word. And that will tell me what is the course of action that will get me where he wants me to go. Not where my enemy wants me to go, but where he wants me to go. And the word is never subject to my emotions. It's never subject to my circumstances. It's always true. Always, always, always. And though it may not tell us specifically like things like, okay, Tamara, I want you to marry Steve. That's not actually in the Bible. But what it does do is it tells us how I should go about looking for a spouse. It tells me, look for fruit. Can I tell you, growing up, I didn't even know that there was such a thing as spiritual fruit and that I should be looking for it. But if I'd read my Bible, it would tell me how to navigate this thing, right? It tells me how to navigate the darkness. And this is the other reason I really wanted to bring this message to you. Because when it says your word is a lamp unto my feet, it's not just scripture. It's not just the written word. Jesus is known as the word of God. He is a living person. Jesus is the word of God. And I suppose a lot of you don't know, and I should share with you why this is so important to me. In 2017, I think it was. No, 2018, I'm sorry. It was just over a year ago. A lot's happened since then. No, I'm sorry. In 2016, I should back this up. I was diagnosed with a condition uh, that I had already suffered with and been improperly diagnosed for 32 years at that point. If you were to Google the suicide disease, you would see what I'm talking about. It's called trigeminal neuralgia. Trigeminal ner your trigeminal nerve is the nerve that covers this part of your face, the front half of your face here. It goes in your eye, across your eye, the iris. It goes to all your teeth, your tongue, your face, all of it. That's the trigeminal nerve right there. It is the most painful condition known to man. No medication works for this. There are some medications they have now that will treat it, but it is incurable and it is progressive. When you get this neuralgia, it is immediately a pain you have never, ever experienced, and it gets worse from there. It's incurable, and it's progressive. It's normally only one-sided. I had it both sides, bilaterally. And because I super, super like to be thorough, I also had the neuralgia for the nerves on the back half, bilaterally. So for 33 years, I suffered. It was hard. I was 12 years old. It was literally so ridiculous. It was just a playground accident. And my head got hit really, really hard. And we didn't know what happened, but then I slept for a week. And the pain started. 
I was 12. Now, those of you that are teenagers, and the rest of us have been teenagers, you know how hard the teenage years are, right? That is just hard, and I was doing it with more pain than I had words for. You remember I said it's progressive. So at the age of 12, I had this entirely around my head, and it just kept getting worse from there. But see, here's the beautiful thing. I'd been saved very young, about four years old at a VBS. Now, my family, really good people, but not, only my mother was a believing Christian. Everybody else in my family wasn't a Christian, so I didn't grow up in a Christian environment. I didn't grow up reading my Bible, but I was saved. The only way I can tell you that I can stand here today is because the word of God is not just printed words on a page. The word of God is a living person. He is a person. And I stand here in front of you today as proof that he is a person. Because if you think that a 12-year-old who just experienced this kind of trauma and is now experiencing more pain on a regular, this isn't like once or twice a year, this was once or twice a week. And I will tell you by the time, well, by, by the, I guess it was 2017, by that point, I now had body pain, 30 years. There's so much stuff that I could tell you in the interim. There was a terrible traumatic car accident and that whole thing was clearly of God, but I'm just gonna stick with the pain right now. Because, as I told you, it's called the suicide disease. And when you have that much pain, I've heard it described, there's actually two different kinds. There's one that is a ongoing pain that never ever leaves, that's TN2. TN1 is a sharp, like, uh, not sharp, um, it's like you got struck in the face by lightning. That's what it feels like. Um, a lot of us uh, who have had this neuralgia, we all have our teeth drilled out because we think our teeth are dying because of the nerve pain happening and they drill our teeth out and stuff. It, it's that sort of thing. But after 32 years, I was to the point where I really was barely functioning. The pain was so, un I mean, I had, it was not just the, I had both of those, by the way. I, like I said, I'd been thorough. It wasn't just bilateral, and it wasn't TN1 or TN2. I had both. The constant pain never went away, and occasionally I got struck by lightning in the face, repeatedly. If you think that a 12-year-old knows how to navigate that, I want to know the 12-year-olds you know. The only way it was possible for me to continue was because the Word of God is a person. It's Jesus Christ. And even though I wasn't reading my Bible, the word was with me. And the word sustained me. And when the pain would come, I'll tell you, it was so bad. Literally, by the end of it, it would be days laying on the floor of my closet, just racked with pain spasms, wearing the same clothes. And I'll just not go into more detail because it's gross. If you can imagine being in pain where you have nothing, you can't even see, I would be on the floor of my closet with the door pulled shut for days. But here's the thing. When that first time the pain hit, and I didn't even know what just happened. Again, there was no diagnosis. We didn't know what was causing this pain. And the enemy was right there to tell me, once we figured out this is gonna keep happening, the enemy was right there to tell me, if you do not end it this time, you are just signing up for the next time and the next time and the next time. But God, who was with me in the darkness, said, but it won't be an issue because I have a call on your life. I have a plan for you. 
I have a purpose for you. It's the reason you're alive. It's the reason that fall didn't kill you. I have a call on your life. I have a job for you to do. And if you can just meet me there, gut this out, I will sustain you through it. And he sustained me through it. I have never talked to anyone who survived more than 12 years with one-fourth of what I was living with. And I'm not here to toot my own horn. Because if you think it's my horn that you're tooting, uh, excuse me, if you think it's my horn that I'm tooting, I have not properly conveyed that I was 12 years old and this was more pain than any of us in this room hopefully has ever even experienced. I gave birth with no pain meds, guys. It was a Tuesday. That's the kind of pain I'm talking about. That's what it was like. But if you can imagine, it just kept getting worse. And it kept getting worse, and there were never any answers. And I developed a lot of animosity and distrust toward everything involving the medical community. By the time I was a senior in high school, I was being, I was being uh, prescribed narcotics. So um, probably by my 20s, I'd learned I'm tired of detoxing. I'm tired of getting off these narcotics that don't really help. Nothing helps. I'm tired of doing all the drugs and this and that and the stuff that just messes with your body worse. And I have no trust toward these people, but God has never left me wrong. And though the pain would come, and I'd be in the dark, and it would be just me and him on the floor of my closet, it was me and him. And I'm here to tell you, it doesn't matter what you're going through. We live in a dark, dark world. If you're dealing with depression, I'm very familiar with depression. It's very, very hard. And I hear so often people say, I want to believe in God. I want to follow Jesus, but it's just so hard. I want to grab you and just shake you by the lapels and say, you're already doing what's hard. We're already living hard. If we're not falling back on Jesus every day, you are struggling with hard. And I'm here to tell you, there is a hard that has a blessed outcome. Because though I was living with an insane amount of pain, I was blessed through it. His word, as we were talking about, in Psalms also says, though they walk through the valley of weeping, it will become a place of refreshing springs where pools of blessing collect after the rain. My husband and I will be married 25 years in the spring, and we are more in love now than we ever have been before. We are closer now than we ever have been before. I have two wonderful children that are walking with the Lord who honor their father and I, and we actually managed to kind of add another one to that mix. I am so blessed, but when you stop and think that this was done, when the enemy wanted to kill me with the suicide disease at the age of 12, and all I needed to do was step up and say, but God has a plan for me. He will light the way through this darkness, and I'm going to stick with that, because enemy, I do not like what you are telling me, and it is not going to be the narration of my life. Please understand, you have that choice. Every one of us has that choice. When our emotions are so big and our thoughts are going crazy and we don't know what to do, we can go to his written word because it never changes. But here's the thing, when you're in pain, and sometimes you can't even make sense of what's on the page because you're just hurting, the word is there for that too. He is a person. He is a person who wants to intimately be there for you. He wants to be your best friend if you will let him. He, the word of God, is a real person. And I'm here to tell you today, he saves. And I don't just mean that he saves your eternity. I mean he saves your now. Your valley of weeping will become a place of refreshing springs if we let him. He will light the way for us. 
He will be the light in the darkness. And his word says that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it. I stand before you today as someone that the darkness did not overcome. On May 5th of 2018, um, I started out that morning having just spent the last two days on the floor of my bathroom puking from the pain. Got up that morning with a new attitude because this is the day the Lord has made and I will rejoice in it because the enemy is not going to take from me more than he can actually take from me. I ain't giving him anything. So I got up that day and I actually went with a couple of ladies from the church here. I went downtown to a women's event. It was a big conference. Here's the beautiful thing. If you're not in a church body, this is why you need to actually be in a church body. Because there is the presence of the Lord when there are many gathered in his name, there he is in the midst of them. It is important to gather with other Christians to worship. And so we went to this conference, and I had a headache, but I was so excited because normally at that point, I had a shelf life of about two hours before I had to go hide again. But I just felt like he said I could go to this conference, so I went to that conference. And during the conference, God healed me. He actually healed me. <laughs> it is only because I have a certain sense of decorum and don't trust my ability to land properly in heels or I would be jumping up and down because there is no medical or scientific reason I should even be here today. I have spent the last almost two years at this point just randomly crying for no reason because I'm thinking, how is this possible? There is no medical reason that I should be able to do this. At this point, preparing for this event, I've been going since 9 a.m. yesterday morning. That's a far cry from a two-hour shelf life. And I want to tell you today that if you have heard about him, one, believe what people are telling you when they're telling you that he heals. Since coming to this church, I have met so many people who have been literally miraculously healed. I'm one of them. I am continually brought to tears. God moves. He loves you. He loves you. He wants to know you, and he is a real person. And when that darkness comes, when there's that diagnosis that tells you this is incurable and progressive, when it tells you these circumstances are nothing like what you thought you should have your life be like, Maybe that's because it wasn't supposed to be like this. Maybe you haven't been following that light that was lighting the right path for your life. Now, I will tell you my story could be a lot different because the enemy was right when he said, if you don't end it this time, you're just signing up for the next time. And the time after that, he's right. We live in a dark world, but I will tell you, we're not helpless. He has provided us a way so that not only are we the ones finding comfort in the light that he provides, but we become a beacon for others. That he wants to bless us, not just so that we can be blessed because he loves us as his children, but because he wants us to be beacons of light for other people. It is just continually amazing to me that I survived that. I've never met anyone lasted more than 12 years. Did I mention it was 32 years of just getting worse? I mean, again, not to pat myself on the back, I am just continually blown away and overwhelmed at what God can and will do because he's not just a book. He is not just a book. I do not stand before you today healed, healthy, and whole and able to do this because of anything the medical community did to, for me, and it wasn't because the Bible is just a book. There is nothing else in this world that can be just a printed word on a page and be life at the same time. And if you look around at the Heads that are nodding, it's because it's true. When you know, when you're reading the word of God with the Holy Spirit, it comes alive. 
it speaks to you specifically. So this message meant a lot to me because if I hadn't followed that lamp that was lighting the path that he had for me, I would not be here today. I would not be part of a marriage that is 25 years strong, healthy and whole. My children wouldn't have parents who love each other and can praise God all day long from the tips of our toes and the bottom of our heart. And it's all because Jesus loves you. He died for you. And he wants to be the light in your path if you'll let him. Thanks so much. not rigged either. Odessa Morris. <laughs> so most of you know Odessa is Pastor Dusty's wife. She is also our children's pastor. So I'm going to give you this and then I'm going to have you stay because she is going to be part of the next thing that Tamara and um, Odessa do <laughs> the things we do. Here she is. Oh, that's just a spoil sport right there. Okay, so every year, for apparently 24 years now, we take a moment to honor someone that just really gets what it is to put your own self aside to serve others. And I felt like this year, that was a no brainer for me, right? Erica, would you please come so we can honor you? <laughs> Erica Bertram is our office assistant. What do we call her? Secretary? <laughs> Minion. Okay, I like Angel, but you know, whatever works. But this woman here, I don't know what I would do for our Bible studies. For every event that we have, I show up with my head barely screwed on and six different lists running through my head. And Erica, please help. And you know what she always does? She smiles and she helps. Right? Good job. I'm going to give her the flowers and then you talk about it. And uh, so I work with Erica every single day, and it takes a lot to work with me because I'm high energy, I'm really obnoxious, and my favorite thing to do is when she's stressed is to literally knock everything off her desk and lay on it just to talk to her because I feel that she needs a little alone time with me. But um, we just have a great work environment. Um, we just love each other. Um, and she's my friend. I, I mean, if she wasn't here, I don't know what to say. I would be really bored. She'd probably get a lot more done if I wasn't there, but she literally is the glue. She does a lot more than a lot of people see. Um, and she is just a godly woman and I'm an amazing woman. And I'm so happy to work with her every day. Thank you, Erica. The Bible says he's a king of the Jews. He's a king of Israel. He's a king of righteousness. He's a king of the ages. He's a king of heaven. He's a king of glory. He's a king of kings. And he is the Lord of lords. Now that's my king. Do you know him? No means of measure can define his limitless love. Well, well, he's in endurance strong. He's entirely sincere. He's eternally steadfast. He's immortally graceful. He's impurely powerful. And he's impartially merciful. 
Do you know him? He's our son. He's a sinner savior. He's a centerpiece of civilization. He's unparalleled. He's unprecedented. Well, he's the loftiest idea in literature. He's the highest personality in philosophy. He's a fundamental doctrine of true theology. Do you know him? He supplies strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted and the tried. He sympathizes and he saves. He heals the sick. He cleans the lepers. He forgives sinners. He discharges debtors. He delivers the captives. He defends the thief. He blesses the young. He serves the unfortunate. He regards the age. He rewards the diligent. And he beautifies the meek. Do you know him? My king is a king of knowledge. He's a wellspring of wisdom. He's a doorway of deliverance. He's a pathway of peace. He's a roadway of righteousness. He's a highway of holiness. He's a gateway of glory. Do you know him? His light is matchless. His goodness is limitless. His mercy is everlasting. His love never changes. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. His reign is righteous. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. Well, I wish I could describe him to you, but he, he's indescribable. He's indescribable. Yeah. He's incomprehensible. He's invincible. He's irresistible. You can't get him out of your mouth. You can't get him off of your hands. You can't outlive him, and you can't live without him. Well, Pharisees couldn't stand him. But they found out they couldn't stop him. Pilate couldn't find any fault in him. And Herod couldn't kill him. Death couldn't handle him. And the grave couldn't hold him. That's my king. Yeah. He always has been. And he always will be. I'm talking about he had no predecessor. And he'll have no successor. You can't even teach him, and he's not going to resign. That's my king. Isn't our God amazing? Give him a hand. So tonight you learned about how God is a lamp into your feet. And you heard about Tamara's testimony about who God is. And what would be a sad event for me is if we didn't give you a chance, if you didn't already know him, to get to know him. Or if you want to rededicate your life to him to give you that chance. So um, if everybody could just bow your heads and close your eyes. Now God is a big God. And like Tamara said, you can bring anything to his feet. And I know sometimes that... People can make you feel that God isn't big enough or people can deter you from having a relationship with God. But God really wants to touch your heart tonight. I was saved here at 15 years old at a Seder's dinner and I gave my life to the Lord and I've never turned back. And and I feel that everyone in this room, if you feel God just tugging at your heart, that you would just, just go and lean into him tonight. So if you have never accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, and you want to do that tonight, would you raise your hand? Okay, thank you. If you have had a relationship in the past, and you just just took a different path, and you just want to be closer to him again, you want to rededicate your life to him tonight, Start anew, starting now. If that's you, could you lift up your hand? Okay. Now, just as everyone, I do it every time. Like I said, I was saved since I was 15. Every time we do a prayer, I do it out loud. So if you could repeat after me. Dear God, I love you. You are a lamp unto my feet. You, you are my Savior. You died on the cross for my sins. 
but you rose victoriously again. Lord, come into my heart. Come into my mind. Lord Jesus, be the king of my heart. Just thank you, Lord Jesus. And all of his children say, amen, amen. Thank you, Odessa. So now it is almost time to wrap up the evening. I hope that you've really enjoyed yourselves. But of course, we cannot wrap up without giving away these amazing gifts. Yes, we need to do the raffle. Does this sound like a good plan? Okay, there's way too much enthusiasm in this room. <laughs> Woo! Awesome. Well, I'll turn it over to Kathy. Okay, y'all have your tickets ready? Isn't this quilt beautiful? And the lady who made it is in here. Where are you? Over at the last table. Her name is Diane Fahey, and it is beautiful. And she has graciously donated this to the women's ministry for all of you. So we just thank you very much for it. All right, y'all ready? Y'all got your tickets? All right. 0 8 Six six zero two eight eight or sorry zero eight six six zero two <laughs> Well does anyone else have it? No one has zero two? Well, it might be yours. We'll check it out. Put tickets in there. <laughs> okay. We're going to assume, but we'll confirm. So whoever put their ticket in this one, it's yours. 086607. Is that yours? There you go. Thank you. Okay, this one is zero eight six six one eight. One eight. And just so y'all know, my mother made this one. <laughs> Zero eight six five four nine. Y'all are not very enthusiastic here for winners. <laughs> and the last two are four nine. <laughs> That's much better. Thank you. All right, this one is nine one five. Four one five. No one? <laughs> Four one five? It's a red ticket. I didn't even know we had red tickets. It might be. I don't know. <laughs> you put them up here. Well, apparently that nobody put in for this one because these are all red. Well, do y'all have your tickets from last year? <laughs> hey, Tamara, this is this year. <laughs> okay, zero eight six four six five. 
<laughs> Did you get it? There you go. Only one ticket in there. Zero eight six five three seven. Okay, and this last quilt. Uh, this one apparently was really popular. <laughs> and none of the tickets are red. <laughs> Zero eight six five five five. Outstanding. Thank you, Kathy, so much for taking care of the raffles. We have all of our door prizes gone, but we haven't yet finished with the very traditional candlelight portion of our candlelight dinner. You will find at your place seating a candle, and I've got some lighters up here. If we can just... Yeah, just start lighting candles and then touch it to the person near you to light their candle, if you would, please.
sound it one more time. I pray, Lord Jesus, safety and protection as everyone goes home tonight. Your hand and your angels watching out over them. But God, we just glorify you. We praise you, God. We thank you for this time. And everybody here said, amen, amen. Good night, everybody.